it already again. It's Friday again. The week just flies by. It's this time of year. There are a million moving parts, as we all experience during the holiday season. But I try to get down here as often as I can because this is my kind of release, my respite, my happy spot, my happy place. Uh, so today we're going to play around with, yet again, all of the uh, pieces and parts that I unearth while I'm in my attic digging around or I'm in my basement digging around. So I came upon some bundles of um, this. This is upholstery, upholsterer's webbing. This is what you would web onto a frame before cushions would be made or springs would be put in. And I'm not exactly sure how I came upon um, these bolts of it. I'm looking around. I have a whole bunch of them spooled up. I don't know where I put them. Nonetheless, I thought, well, what can I do with this? I certainly love the kind of natural burlap feeling that it is, and I love the little bit of red ticking that you're seeing in there. So I thought, could I make a little holiday banner? And that's what I've decided to do. So just hang with me here, and I'm gonna walk you through this quick and easy, super cute holiday decoration, or really a great gift. This is a super easy uh, craft to do. So with the very uh, webbing, I'm gonna measure out a length of this. Get myself together here. Uh, I'm gonna say nine and a half inches. So we're gonna cut this right there, straight across. And then on this, we're going to create our banner. It'll be in a horizon, It'll be in a, a vertical uh, orientation. These are uh, dowels, wood dowels. Uh, these particular ones happen to be off of uh, the old flags that I would put in the yard for the Fourth of July. I have a bunch of those in the garage, so I went through, and the ones that were tattered, I took the sticks and thought I'm not going to waste that. I'm actually going to make a little banner like this. I'm going to hot glue that. And then I'll hot glue one at the bottom. But before I do that, I want to decorate this. And the way I'm going to decorate this, I'm going to use the rubber stamps that I speak highly of, an old tree stamp that I've had forever. And I've mixed up some green paint. And I'm going to take this. I don't know if you're familiar with the rubber stamps or if you've ever used the rubber stamps. If you do, it doesn't really work so much to stamp the stamp in the paint and then onto your your. Uh, finished product. It becomes too too painted, too drippy and goopy. So I normally will mix up my paint, my colors here, and I'll brush it onto the sponge or the stamp, and then I will do my stamping. Now, I'm going heavy on the tree part, as you can see, with the green, but I'm going very faint on the trunk because I just want a shadow of the trunk because I'm going to go back I'm actually going to highlight that in brown. So let's get our tree kind of oriented in the center of this banner of burlap. Give this a good pressing. You really have to press hard on this because of the texture of what we're printing on. If you don't give it a good hard push down, you will get a very sketchy uh, stamping or printing. So there we go. There is part one of our tree. Now to give this a little bit more depth and a little bit more interest, I'm going to take uh, my little cardboards where I talk about using my little cardboard paddles. I'm gonna dip this in one shade of green and I'm just gonna lightly edge this tree so it feels like little branches are coming down. And I'm only gonna do this color on the one side, almost as if it's the shadowed side or the darker side of this tree. Like that. Whenever you do this with the cardboard, I will tell you the trick is to make sure that the cardboard that you're using really fits within the actual image. If it's too big, you go outside the lines, you know what kind of anxiety that causes many. I am one of those. Um, now I'm going to take another shade of green. This is a little more grassy green or summery green, springtime green. I'm going to mix that in as well because I just want everything spinning off the original color that we printed with. 
and sometimes I'll even go on to this brush because I can get a little better paint saturation. And then I'm going to take this lighter color and I'm just going to edge this side a little bit, giving this just the slightest additional details. Because it's all those little things I think that make this, make these little crafts special. Okay, so there's our tree. I'm going to play around a little bit even with this. Just, just a little bit. And again, like I always say to you, this is not, this is so not brain surgery. This, everything that I do in this studio, everything is joyful. It's fun. It's as it should be. That's why we have hobbies. That's why we have crafts. That's why we have passions. Because if it's not fun, to quote my dear friend, Jen Moorhead, if it's not fun, we're not doing it. And I live by that. Thank you, Jen, for that beautiful slogan. Um, here, I'm going to take, knowing that that was my trunk, I'm going to dip this in brown, and I am just going to create a little kind of random trunk right there. You could, if you want, you could put a little thin line. Let's play around. This is what I love. Let's just put a little, every once in a while, like a whisper of, is there a trunk underneath that tree coming through? Just like that. All right, so that's my tree pattern. Now, I'm gonna take an artist brush. This is a little, little fine edged brush. And I'm gonna shake up a little bit of white. And I am going to snow cap this. Just like that. It does not have to be exacting. It's just a nod to if this was had a little snow covered boughs, what would it look like? It would look like that. So we're just gonna do, you know, every once in a while, and granted I'm working on a little bit of a wet paint here, so if I allowed this to dry in between, I may have a little more exacting application, but again, not what I'm about. I want this to be loose, I want this to be fun. Let's add a little more over here. And here, just as the, the snow would hit the edges of the tree, like so, just like that. Okay, now, what I also think will be fun is, let's put some flurries. So either with the back of this brush, or my favorites, the skewers, the back of a skewer, like a barbecue skewer, I oftentimes will dip that, and that'll give me little stamping. So let's just put some flurries around here, like so, like that. And again, you just kind of, you know, you follow the rhythm. One can even be floating in front of the tree. What's the difference? I'm loving how cute that is. All right, I'm gonna let this dry. When it dries, I will come back and I will put the dolls in and we'll go from there. It's time to uh, create the banner portion of this. I did one together with the little uh, snowflakes and I did one without. I'm not sure which one I like better, uh, nonetheless. So I've cut these little lengths. This is approximately five inches and I'm gonna take this burlap and I'm just gonna roll this over like this. And as you see, I've got like the same amount of dowel exposed on both sides. And then I'm gonna dig our glue gun and we're just gonna run a bead of glue like that. And then we're gonna roll this over and we're gonna press that into place. Now that's kind of a strange angle, so I'm gonna take my ruler here and I'm just gonna hold that like that until that glue sets. Literally seconds. This is a pretty, give that a little bit of pressure. Like that. And there you have part one of your banner. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. Now we might get, oops, that was a little bit wet. We might get to um, the bottom and decide that we don't need as much 
as of a fold over. So now that we have our image, the size of our image, we can roll this over like so. Think, eh, that's good. I want the same amount of, you know, space between the top and the bottom. So actually, that is pretty good. Again, same process. B to glue. And then let's roll that over. Again, I'm gonna take my ruler because my ruler is gonna be able to really allow that pressure to get in there. That's a little tricky with your hands because of the dowel. And there you go. And there it is, banner number one. When we come back, I'll show you how I'm gonna put a little tie on here, how this will hang, what other little elements I might wanna add to it. But um, so quick, so easy, and so fun. I'm back to the final stages of this, and here's our little banner with the doll on the top and the bottom. And the question is, how should we hang this? Should we hang it with red ribbon? Should we hang it with twine? Should we hang it with variegated yarn? Not so bad, that's a good, good color combination. So I'm gonna play around with that a little bit. And when I return, I will show you. I think I like the idea of the ribbon best. So the way I'm gonna do this, rather than tie it off, I'm actually gonna loop this like that. And with a dot of hot glue, just like that, I am going to adhere that ribbon to the front and back. And if you ever get a little hot glue like runners or whatever, at the very end when it's dry, that is so easy to, to manage. Now for this to hang like over a nail or over a door, you want to put a little twist in this ribbon. So I'm going to twist it as I come around this other side. Because what I want in the end is I want the glued portion to always be on the back side of this. So here's my ribbon coming up. I'm gonna bring this down like that. You see how this literally has a, this is almost like has a fold in it. That is gonna be to our benefit when this hangs on a nail. It will make a funny pucker. All right, I think that's a good, that's a good length. Let's give that a snip. And let's do a dot of glue. And then let's roll that over and give that, oops, give that a little sticky. Again, if you need to get in there tighter, keep a ruler or a, some kind of flat edge that'll help that adhere. It got a little smushy. I think we're good. All right, there you go. Let's give that a little turn. And this is what I was talking about when I said that sometimes you may get like little traces of the glue. It's pretty easy to remove that. I'll just take an X-Acto knife once that's dry, and you literally can just cut that right off. It's not really a big deal at all. Get that so you got a little edge and a little resistance. There you go. You know, sometimes I gotta go in and tweak and fiddle with. But there is our little banner. And I think I'm gonna put some red dots on this. This is fabric paint. Give this a good shake. And sometimes it drips a little bit on the end, so clear it off. And literally, I'm just gonna dot little ornaments on my tree. So cute. So easy. So quick. That looks so sweet. I'm going to put some twine on this one, and I will show you when that is complete. Well, it's a wrap, gang, on the little snowflake tree, or flurry tree. I put a little yarn holder, and on the other tree, I just put, as you know, the little red adornment, and I put a little red hanger. Two super cute, super easy gifts, super easy decorations. Again, 
If you have stuff in your house, think about it. Be creative with it. What can you turn into something fun? Thank you always. Uh, I have to run upstairs and get myself ready for a Zoom Christmas party that I'm hosting here in the house. I wish you all a lovely evening and a lovely start to the weekend. And I do have some other fun things in store for us. So I'm gonna really try to, I'm gonna really try to crank them out this week. I wanna get as many, as many uh, ornaments and decorations in as possible before the punchline. Have a great night.